Okay, we are going to be solving and writing subtraction equations. Okay, this is very, very similar to the adding of uh, equations, but this is kind of the opposite. Similar but opposite. So, for example, x minus 2 equals 3. In order to solve this, and solving this means we want the x to be left by itself. We need to get the minus 2 to cancel out. To do that, we need to do the opposite of subtracting 2, which is adding 2. So I'm going to add 2 to that side of the equation. Now, there's a rule, which I know you're aware of, that says whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side too. So underneath the 3, I'm also going to write plus 2. Now, the minus 2 and the plus 2 are opposites of each other, so they cancel out, leaving just the x. Over here, we have 3 plus 2, which is 5. So our answer is x equals 5. Now, if we get the answer, we're not quite sure. Put this 5 back in for x and make sure that our left side equals our right side. Here, we have 5 minus 2. Is 5 minus 2, 3? If it is, we know we've got the right answer. Okay, let me show you another one. What if we had t minus 7 equals 4? We want the minus 7 to cancel out, so we're going to do the opposite of subtracting 7, which is adding 7. But whatever we do to one side, we've got to do to the other. Our minus 7 and our plus 7 cancel each other out, leaving t. 7 plus, uh, 4 plus 7 is 11. So our answer is 11. Again, we can plug that into with a t and do the subtracting to make sure that both sides are equal. And if you do that, you will find that you are correct on that one. Now, sometimes the numbers are a little bigger. A minus 25 equals 77. Just because the numbers are bigger doesn't mean you do anything different. So on this one, I'm going to add 25, because that's the opposite of subtracting 25. I've got to do the same thing over here. The minus 5 and the plus 25 cancel out, leaving just A. 77 plus 25 is 102. So the answer there is 102. Okay, so sometimes we're going to have... Um, word problems that we need to write an equation for. So listen carefully to this word problem. At, eight, at age 25, German Titov of Russia was the youngest person to travel into space. This is 52 years less than the oldest person to travel into space, which was John Glenn. How old was John Glenn? Write and solve a subtraction problem. Okay, so we want to know how old John Glenn was. So we're going to pick a variable to stand for John Glenn's age. I'm going to pick A to stand for the age of John Glenn. A for age. Again, you can pick any variable you want. I can pick a J for John, a G for Glenn, or maybe just an X. That's entirely up to you. Now, it says that Germain Titoff was 52 years less than John Glenn. So, if he was 52 years less than John Glenn, and he was 25, we want to know John Glenn's age, then we would have to go A minus 52 equals 25. Does this mean 52 less than John Glenn's age? Yes, it does. Now, how do we solve that? We've got our equation. That's the first step. Now, how do we solve it? We have to do the opposite of subtracting 52. That's right. I heard somebody say that. It's adding 52. What do we have to do to the other side? Exactly. Add 52. Minus 52 plus 52 are opposites. They cancel out. 
leaving A for the age of John Glenn. 25 plus 52 is 7. 7. The age of John Glenn was 77. So we need a label for that. 77 what? Years old. John Glenn was 77 years old when he became the oldest person ever to go to space. All right, let's just do a re quick recap. If we have something like this, t minus 7 equals 4t, how do we figure out what t is? We do the opposite of subtracting 7 to both sides. Add 7 and add 7. What happens to the minus 7 and the plus 7? They cancel out. 14 plus 7 is 21. How do we check it? Well, we can plug the 21 back in for t and make sure that our left side equals our right side. Is 21 minus 7 14? Yes, it is. We've done that problem correctly.